Good afternoon, everybody. Um, glad to have you here with us on a, on a hot, steamy Friday afternoon. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about COVID at uh, the top of this. Then we're going to talk about the census and uh, Charles Bryson, who is uh, the head of CREA, but also is heading up our census effort, is going to be here to talk about that. And then I'm going to go back and talk a little bit more about CARES Act money, and then we'll take your questions. On, if you were with us on Wednesday, you know that uh, about 10 minutes in, uh, the, the big storm came blowing through here and, you know, blew off our signal. I'm not sure how that happened, but that's the case. So we're going to cover a few of the things today that we intended to cover on Wednesday as well. So <clears throat> COVID cases. COVID. Uh, as I mentioned to you on Wednesday, uh, our COVID numbers continue to increase both in the city of St. Louis in terms of cases, but also in terms of how many people are in the hospital uh, in ICU and on ventilators. We're very concerned about this. Uh, the numbers today, uh, th these are the cases yesterday, we, 59 new cases in the city. The day before there were 90, the day before that there were 74, the day before that there were 24 and 30. So. We know a couple of things are happening. One, there has been a, a real delay, as I think you all know, in uh, getting results back from Quest and LabCorp, and this is a nationwide issue. And so some of these, of the increase is uh, uh, some catch-up numbers that we've received from, from Quest and LabCorp. But that doesn't change the fact that there is a real increase in the number of cases. And there's something really interesting that I want to uh, point out to you. The, on the uh, day before yesterday when we had 90 new cases, Dr. Eccles said 60% of those cases, over 60% of those cases were young people cases, mostly uh, young people in their 20s and early 30s. This is a real shift in the positive cases. The older folks, are apparently continuing to be careful, staying at home, keeping their circle close. But the young people are going out and uh, they are spreading COVID among themselves. But unfortunately, you know, they also are then contagious to their parents or their grandparents or the people in their circle who are either older or who have underlying health conditions or, or a combination of both. So that is something that is being seen across the country. We are no different, but having 60% of your cases a couple of days ago be people uh, in their, their 20s, early 30s is, is very significant. Now, you know, one of the things that, that we are looking at is where is this occurring? And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Let me give you the hospitalization, currently hospitalized number total is 357. Now, of those, of the 357 in hospitals in the region, 229 are confirmed COVID and 128 are suspected COVID. They do know that these suspected COVID, a good number of them may come back negative, but nevertheless, uh, the number of confirmed COVID people in the hospital at 229 is up from just uh, 10 days ago it was 177. So you can see that's an increase of about 50, 52. That's, that's a 30% increase. So we're seeing real increases in the number of people in the hospital. The hospitals are very concerned about that. Um, and you know that when we're showing these big numbers in terms of new cases, meaning 59, 90, 74, looking back the last three days, um, Unfortunately, in a week, some of those folks will also be in the hospital. So um, that, that is the concerning thing. So what are we doing about that? Number one, today, Dr. Eccles issued Health Commissioner's Order number 12. And what it says is that this coming Monday on the 20th, we were going to go on our large venues to 100% capacity as long as they could continue to socially distance and wear masks. 
Now we're going to hold it at 75%, which is where it is today. So it, we're just not going to, uh, we're not changing that um, from where it is today, but we're not going to expand it any further. The other thing that we are doing is we know that there are some uh, bars, nightclubs, clubs, call them whatever you want, uh, large, uh, large bars primarily where it's been reported to us that, that there, there's not mask wearing and there's not social distancing. So we will, uh, our folks will be out and about uh, tonight, tomorrow night, um, really getting some information about that and then we'll be in contact with those, um, with those businesses to bring them into compliance. Um, we, we have to do that. We're trying everything possible uh, not to uh, to pull back on reopening because we know that <clears throat> if we do have to pull back on the businesses that are open that we are going to put people out of work more people out of work we don't want to do that but we absolutely have to somehow get the message across that you've got to wear a mask you got to wear a mask indoors you should wear a mask outdoors anytime um, you know unless you're sitting at a table in a restaurant eating you need to have your mask on and uh, there isn't anything else that we can do besides wear a mask wash your hands and maintain a social distance in order to uh, keep this from uh, virus from spreading even more and we see what's happening across the country um, and even in some parts of our own state. Uh, and, and we are concerned that, that we're headed in that direction as well. Uh, wearing a mask is not a political issue. Please, don't fall for that. Wearing a mask protects you from me and me from you um, in the event that one of us is, is COVID positive. Maybe we know it, maybe we don't. Uh, hopefully, if you know it, you're at home. But uh, it's 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 exceedingly important um, to do that, and and you know I know that you're tired of hearing this. I think everybody is, but most people, vast majority, when I walk down the street or uh, go into an establishment, store, whatever, most people are wearing masks, but not everyone. I do want to say that some of our major businesses, Target. Walmart, Costco, Schnucks, Deerbergs. Uh, in the city of St. Louis and in St. Louis County, we know that they're required, people going into those are required to wear masks. But these companies have taken a step further and they've said all of our stores, no matter where they're located in the region, uh, you've got to wear a mask to go in there. So, and I know that they're providing masks in many cases. Uh, most of us have masks by now, there's not a shortage. Um, but you know, it, maybe you forgot it, you left it in your car or whatever. Uh, so, so you gotta wear a mask. And I, I give a shout out to those businesses that have taken the extra step because they know that if we're not able to control the spread of COVID, um, that, that the next step is, is pulling back more on the businesses that can be open. So please, you don't, you don't wanna put more people out of work. I don't wanna put more people out of work. And I don't want people to get sick. So thank you for, for uh, wearing your mask. Now, next subject, we're gonna talk about the census. And I'm gonna just give a couple of introductory comments to this. This week, July 13th through the 19th, is uh, Census Surge Week, nationally. Uh, it's an initiative, you know, by the US Census Bureau to just double down on our efforts to get folks to fill out the 2020 census. So Charles Bryson is the leader of the city's, what's called a complete count committee. And that's our committee that tries to reach out to everyone and get them to fill out the census. And we need that. We need that for so many reasons, primarily for federal funding, because many federal funding sources are uh, dependent on how many people you have. So I'm, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna step aside, turn this over to Charles Bryson, 
uh, who is the head of CREA, Civil Rights Enforcement Agency for our city. That's his, his, uh, his regular job. He's the director of that, but we've given him this additional responsibility to be the head of our complete count committee. So Charles, you're on. Thank you very much. Really appreciate this opportunity. So let's go back and talk about what the census is. Census is every 10 years, the United States counts all of the people who live there as of April 1st of that year. It doesn't matter if you're an immigrant, doesn't matter if you're a refugee, doesn't matter if you're illegal. It, what matters is that you are residing in the United States as of April 1st. That includes newborns, by the way. So why does that matter? It's about distribution, as the bear says, it's about distribution of resources. And some of the things that the city uses those resources for are public transportation, recreation, health care, affordable housing and homeless services, community development, and senior services. So those things uh, uh, really have an impact on our community, allows us to do a lot with uh, the federal dollars and our city dollars uh, as a companion piece. So what we're looking for, and this, the big thing is $1,300. Each and every person that fills out the census means $1,300 to the city of St. Louis. And that, again, goes to the services that I mentioned. What we've done is we've had partners, uh, wonderful partners, who have worked with us on the census, the City Recreation Division, the Office of the, Dis of the Disabled, St. Louis Area Agency on Aging, uh, the Thomas Dunn Learning Center, the Immigrant Service Provider Network, the Neighborhood Stabilization Team, Northside Youth and Senior Service Center, um, and uh, they've all helped by getting the message out. Right now, we stand today at 49.7, uh, but that means that less than 50% of the people in the city of St. Louis have filled out their, uh, uh, their census, and we need to have that. What are we gonna do in the, new f in the next few weeks well, after the April election, I'm sorry, after the August election, uh, we're going to do two things. Number one is we're going to do some safety distancing tabling, and we're going to do some canvassing in some of the areas that have been uh, uh, hard to count. Uh, and I believe the website of the City of St. Louis has that information on it. Uh, we're also going to do uh, what's called shine a green light. Uh, a lot of people don't realize where the dollars are spent. So we're going to work with some of the institutions that were mentioned earlier and shine a green light on that particular building or that particular block to where people can see this is where your money goes because it's your money that you're getting back from the federal government. So those are the things that we're going to be doing in the near future. Uh, we have what's called self-response that is till October 31st, but there will be what are going to be called enumerators coming into our neighborhoods probably as early as August, maybe September, and they're gonna help us make sure that we get a quality count that we turn in uh, by the end of the year. So how can you do this? Two ways. My2020census.gov, you can go online and you can fill out the form, or you can make the phone call, which a lot of people in the city are doing, and that number is 844-330-2020. We need everybody's support. We're gonna be out in the streets, knocking on doors, hanging door hangers, we really believe that a quality count allows us to receive federal funding that helps us help you. So with that, uh, is there any questions that people may have? What's the deadline, Charles, and has it been accommodated, uh, or has it been changed to accommodate COVID-19? Well, it's actually been changed several times. Uh, it originally was July or June, then it was July, now it's October. So you can do what's called self-response by October 31st. What kind of information is the Census Bureau asking me to provide? Uh, they're very interested in your name, your address, your date of birth, and then a few other items that just directly relate to who, how many people are in your household. Um, and that information cannot be used by any other agency, federal, state, or local. Uh, it is secure information only to be used by the Census Bureau. When will we expect people to go door to door and what kind of impact do you think that'll have on our response rate? We're looking to have people go to door after the August 4th election, probably either that weekend or the next full week. Uh, we may do two or three runs at that before October 31st. We think that's gonna have a huge impact on the, um, uh, the number of people uh, who respond to the census. And we're looking forward to getting out in the street, 
safe distancing, so there'll be masks, there'll be gloves probably. Uh, we probably will just leave a door hanger rather than knock on the door and interact with people because we want to make sure that both parties are safe. And if someone doesn't have access to a computer, doesn't have access to the internet and they live in the city, what's the best way that they could uh, fill out their census? Um, so there were several places uh, that were allowing uh, either you to have a, lap, um, a laptop to use that or, for example, the library had that. We're going to have to update that information now because of COVID. Uh, we'll probably get that done by the middle of next week with who is now going to be open to allow us to do that. I know some of the senior service centers, centers uh, are allowing people to use laptops and then they wipe them clean uh, and disinfect them when uh, each individual person uses them. I think that's all we got. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Give us a, I hope you've all filled out your census. Um, if you haven't, if you need some help, let us know and we'll, we'll help you figure that out. So, on to the other topics here. And we were, uh, we were going to talk about this on, um, on Wednesday, but I, and I was actually in the process of talking about it when the storm came through and dropped us, if that's what you call it. So um, importantly, on Wednesday, we were announcing that applications were now available. It went up on Wednesday morning, I believe it was about 11 o'clock, uh, to be able to apply for rental assistance or mortgage assistance. We have allocated $5.4 million in the CARES Act funding to help people who have not been able to pay their rent or mortgage because they lost their job during COVID um, to help them pay their rent and stay in their apartment or in their in their house. And we know that we've received, um, well, yesterday, I think at the end of the day yesterday, it was about 1,500 applications. It's a pretty simple process to get started. It's right on the city homepage. So if you go to the homepage of the city, you'll, you'll find a, a, a link to the application, ask you some information, and then um, we will work with you to provide the documentation that's needed so that if you were unable to pay your rent for, let's just say, April, May, June, or March, April, May, you can get up to th assistance on up to three months of rent or mortgage assistance. This is also uh, available if you were able to pay it then, but you're not able to pay it now. Uh, some people, you know, did keep their jobs through, say, may or june but now they have been laid off from their jobs so it's available for either way and um, our our folks will work with you will help you on this we want you to be able to stay in your apartment or in your home so that um so that that your uh your life is stable as stable as possible while hopefully you are uh employed again and are able to to uh, continue to pay your, your rent. We'll help you, we'll work with your landlord. Um, there are a lot of services available for that. So that $5.4 million is available uh, now. So if you're in that situation in the city of St. Louis, you know this is city of St. Louis, um, this is available to you now. Two other things to remind you of last week uh, I think it may have been last Friday, we also announced that there was $3 million in utility assistance available for folks that are behind on their utility uh, bills, primarily their electric bill. We have this available because one, to stay in your, uh, in your home or, or apartment, you have to be able to pay your utilities. And with, especially with this heat wave, I don't know what the temperature is out there right now because I haven't been out since early this morning. but. Uh, I know it was predicted today and for the next couple of days uh, to have uh, temperatures, what do they call it, the fe what it feels like. Um, there's a word for that. Oh, yeah. Um, but you know what I'm saying, that it would feel like it was as much as 110. So uh, whatever the heat, the actual temperature is, plus the humidity and all that, 
is really the real field temperature, some people call that. Heat index. I Heat think. index. Um, so it's hot out there. Please check on your neighbors, especially your neighbors, your family, your friends, uh, especially older people. Sometimes um, when these brick houses that many people are in or brick apartments that many people in St. Louis are in, as the days go on and on, and as the temperatures stay hot, those buildings heat up. You, you know, sometimes your body temperature kind of heats up with it, and that's a very dangerous uh, situation. So you got to run those air conditioners. We've got uh, utility assistance to to help you with that. And then finally, we talked about this last week also, but these grants are beginning to uh, will be coming out shortly. We had. Um, four million dollars available for small business grants. Small businesses are businesses with under 25 employees, so five, 10, 15 employees. Uh, at least 50% of this grant money will go to small businesses that are in distressed areas, in areas that have been designated opportunity zones or uh, uh, preservation areas, choice areas. And so we do have a lot of applications for that. We are working on that now to see who qualifies. Uh, $5,000 will give about 800 businesses um, actual grants, the $5,000 grants, which we hope, our hope is that those grants will be uh, enough to fill the gap to help people stay in business, help people stay employed for a bit. Um, while while they're able to get back their business is able to get back on their feet so those are the three major uh, cares act programs that we have uh, rolled out thus far you'll be hearing more but these are the uh, the ones and I think these are especially important ones because these go to the humanitarian um, aspect of taking care of our of our folks so um, with that, I bet maybe there are some questions. Quite a few questions, Mayor. So uh, Chris is watching and asked a question about whether or not you noticed how Just John's just recently announced they're gonna start taking down the temperature, the names, the addresses, contact information of everybody who comes and whether you would encourage other businesses in the city to do something similar. Thanks for that question. You know, I noticed that in, uh, last night on Facebook. I think it was Facebook. And I think that's so responsible. Just John's is a, a bar in the Grove area. Uh, John Arnold is, is uh, the individual who, who runs Just John and Just John's and has for a long time very good business. And I just think it is, no pun intended, just, but I think it's so responsible because we know that the spread of this virus is among young people. We know that young people more than older people tend to go to uh, bars and entertainment areas, uh, but it's very important if someone were to um, were to have be positive COVID. It's really important that you know who was there at that time, and they're doing temperature screenings as well, right? So, I mean, the businesses really are stepping up, and uh, this is a, a great great example of, of uh, business that has stepped up in St. Louis. There was there's also a business. Um, Hammerstones, which is in uh, Soulard, which also put out something on on uh, social media that was really just talking about, hey, you guys, you've got you've got to wear your masks. Um, you know, they have employees that are that are a little bit older in some cases. They've got some employees with underlying health conditions, and customers as well. And so, uh, I hope this is an indication that everybody's getting it, uh, meaning understanding it um, and that these masks are so important but we're seeing businesses really begin to step up now and, and that's very encouraging to me because the numbers are not encouraging right now uh, Mikhail asked a question mayor is it going to be possible or is it at all possible that the city will close down bars and restaurants you know Mikhail um, it's possible but we don't want to do that let me just say it in that way we don't know we don't we don't want to do that we know that puts people out of work but it is uh certainly uh 
not out of the realm of possibilities, but I'm not predicting that that's going to happen right now. What I'm predicting that's going to happen right now is that more and more people are going to wear masks, more and more people are going to socially distance, and that the businesses themselves, who for goodness sake do not want to be shut down, they had to endure that terrible two-month shutdown. Um, so uh, it's possible, but I'm not predicting that. We did get a follow-up question to emergency order number 12, and who, what kind of large venues in the city, who is that going to apply to? Thanks. That's a good question. So large venues, as we describe them, are um, ballrooms in hotels, for example. That's a large venue where you might have a party, uh, a reception, wedding reception or something. It's the zoo. It's the botanical gardens. It's um, the aquarium. It's the arch. All those places that are large venues. It's not a restaurant, even though it could be large, but that doesn't fall into the large venue category. We have a separate set of um, uh, recommendations and, and guidelines, really, requirements for large venues. They each had to submit their plan to the health department and get their plan approved before they could open. And so that's a, a separate category of businesses that, that we have a lot of in the city of St. Louis, and we're, we're happy that we do, um, as opposed to bars and restaurants, which have their own set of uh, requirements and guidelines. A few more questions, Mayor. Amanda's watching and asked your thoughts on whether schools should be opening or whether they should remain closed to come fall. You know, whether or not schools open is a decision that's going to be made by the school districts, whether it's St. Louis Public Schools, parochial schools, uh, uh, charter schools, independent schools. They're, they're each going to get to make their own decision. We have about a 54-page set of requirements and guidelines that we have developed in connection with the school districts. So if they do decide to open, what I know is occurring and, and we're dealing with this day to day right now is schools are they're really trying to figure out what to do. Some are offering uh, a combination of in classroom and virtual learning. And so I think you can expect to, to hear from your kids schools in the next week or two. I'm not making a commitment for them, but I just know they're all trying to figure this out. Um, I do know, um, this is maybe a little segue, that in the city of St. Louis, we have not yet authorized youth sports. You, you may have seen that St. Louis County, who authorized it a bit ago, a month or something, maybe has now pulled back on that. In the city of St. Louis, youth sports, so that means, you know, the football team or the basketball team that uh, is maybe connected with school or some other tournament or league is, is still not allowed in the city of St. Louis. Um, schools, we're all trying to figure that out right now. It's very difficult because we're seeing these numbers bump up. Um, if we can see a really serious impact as a result of mask wearing, which mask wearing just became mandatory two weeks ago, I think it was almost exactly two weeks ago, uh, and if we can really see compliance with that, then we will see, uh, we, we won't continue to see such a steep uh, gain. So that's, that didn't answer your question about schools directly because it's their decision, but it's a tough decision right now. Last two questions, Mayor, one COVID, one not. Mm -hmm. The last COVID question, um, a lot of big cities across the country are issuing tickets or issuing citations for businesses or people caught not mm -hmm. in, following the mask mm -hmm. order. Mm -hmm. Is that something the city should do? That's Caleb who asked that. So Caleb, the city uh, is in contact with businesses that are not uh, forcing the um, mask wearing in their businesses. And uh, so far we have not had to shut any business down for doing, for not requiring the mask. It is something that is a possibility though, and we're working with a few businesses um, to, to try to uh, avoid that. If we can't avoid it, then we will do it. So the non-COVID last question of the day, Kyle um, is watching and asked Mayor what you're hoping to accomplish or see accomplished out of the special session that the governor called 
to deal with public safety in the city of St. Louis and across the state? So we are in, we supported two, por two items that are in that uh, special session. One is to lift the residency requirement for public safety officers, so police, fire, and EMS. And the second is some funding for uh, victim, um, uh, hmm, let me get the right words here. It's not victim services, but, but in order to uh, be able to house people that may be witnesses that might not be willing to talk about, to talk to police otherwise, uh, victim services funding. Witness and protection. Witness protection funding, thank you. Um, and so those are two things that, that we would like to see come out of the special session um, that starts at the end of July. And um, so we'll, we'll, be working on, we'll be working on that. That's what we have time for today, Mayor. That's what we have time for. Thank you all. Appreciate you, you uh, joining us. Sorry we weren't able to take questions la on Wednesday. And, uh, but we've just had sort of a, a, a packed schedule here. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Uh, stay cool, enjoy yourselves, wear your mask. Thank you.